Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of our first sailing season down here in the Pacific coast of Mexico. If you remember from last week, we sailed all the way up to Manzanillo and we are going to be here for quite some time because we are going to be leaving La Vida Gypsy for a long time, for the first time ever. That's right, I'm going to be taking off first actually. I've got a plane to catch in the morning and I'm gonna be leaving Linda and Rigby here all, all alone, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure yet if I'm leaving on my own volition or if I'm actually being kicked off this boat. It's a big bag, but it's empty because I'm preparing to bring back lots of parts and supplies, hopefully. Maybe a pair of shoes from a baby. <laughs> Who knows? Two seconds in, and it already feels very, very weird going back to the boat without Kurt. This is gonna be tough. My first feat is getting this dinghy up by myself. I've seen him do it a million times, and now I have to figure out how to do it on my own. So, We'll see. All right, Rigby, that was the easy part. Now comes the hard part, lifting this up without flipping the dinghy over. It's scary because even Kurt has almost slipped his dinghy over several times when lifting this up and he calls me out to help him. So if I screw this up, I have absolutely nobody to help me. So here we go. Hey guys, we made it to Texas. Everything was nice and smooth and made it here to my family's land. This is, this is our family's land. This is where my dad lives. Those are the houses behind me where, uh, where he lives. And uh, yeah, and by the way, these are my horses. This is Jake over here and this is Phoebe right here. And uh, they are very old. I don't know how long they're gonna be around, but hey, they survived the winter. So yeah, they did, a, they did good. They did, they're doing a good job. We're coming to Texas for a few reasons. Main reason is we need to update our visa. So that's already been accomplished by me going out of the country, coming back here to the States. Once I go back to Mexico, they'll restamp my passport and I'll have another, you know, 80, 180 days uh, renewed that I can stay in the country. So that was the main thing we had to get updated because our 180 days were up. Second reason I came here to Columbus was because I had a bunch of materials that I was unable to get shipped to me in Mexico. Uh, since we're always on the move and we don't really have a, an address in Mexico, I got everything shipped here to my dad's place in Texas. So I came here to Columbus to pick up all those materials that I've been collecting and ordering for the boat. And we got those together. So now me and my dad are going to get in the car and we are going to drive down to Kima, Texas, which is where our boat is actually registered. You may have seen the, the name Kima, Texas on the back of La Vida Gypsy. That is where the boat is registered. And uh, that's where we're heading today because it's on the coast just south of Houston. And uh, we are going to go to some of the marine stores there. I still need to get a few more things, some greases, some sealants, some lubricants, uh, some foul weather gear. So we're gonna go do a little shopping, see what else I can stuff in the suitcase before I get overloaded and overweight and try to get as much as I can while I'm on this run. Yeah. 
So there was one other reason why this trip to Texas was needed. It was pretty essential. And that is because Linda and I have been at each other's throats, it seems like, for a while now. And so we needed a break. We needed to get that separation from each other in order to reset. And, uh, you know, that happens. That happens in relationships. And it certainly doesn't help when you are in a sailboat and you are stuck in a very tight quarters. You rely on each other all the time. You don't really have any place to go. And, you know, you don't have anybody else to talk to. So, you know, you end up either really liking each other or getting on each other's nerves. And in this case, uh, yeah, we've been getting on each other's nerves a little bit lately. So. Okay, I don't want this to become a complaint party and I also don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable or bored or feel awkward that you are about to be led into our relationship life, but this is reality. We are real people, we have feelings, and this is what it is. And the reality is that now that Kurt has been gone for a couple of hours, my anxiety levels have been reduced drastically. I feel like I have created a nice safe space for myself to be able to let out some emotions and the fact that we have been just living together for six months non-stop without having some time for independence is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to our problems. The other level of situation that we're having is the fact that I just don't think we appreciate each other. I don't think that he appreciates anything that I do. I don't think that he values all of the things that I have learned and the role that I have played in all of this. And low key, I think he feels the same way, that I don't appreciate any of the things that he does. And we have just been so stubborn and so hard headed and just at each other's throats for so long that we're losing sight of a lot of the good stuff, of all of, of all of the good things and, and what we do for each other truly. One of the, the main issues that we've been dealing with is, is Linda just doesn't, uh, doesn't really feel appreciated. She doesn't feel heard. She doesn't feel like her voice is being heard on the boat. And that's due mainly to my personality. I'm just, you know, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. It's not so much that I'm a perfectionist. It's just, I like things done my way. And, uh, you know, that's, I know that's hard, but, uh, you know, being the captain of the boat, I'm responsible for the boat. I'm responsible for our lives. And, you know, I want, uh, I want things done correctly. And so many times rather than let her do it, rather than let her do it right or wrong, and rather than try to teach her how to do it, I just tell her, Hey, back off. I'll do it myself, you know, and, and I don't really mind doing it myself, but, um, you know, when I sit there and tell her, no, don't do it. I'll do it myself. No, don't do it. I'll do it myself. Uh, it makes her feel a bit useless and it definitely does not make her feel appreciated on the boat. And so it's something that I've, I've really got to work on. And, uh, and that's what I've been doing. I've been working on it. I'm not going to list all of the things that I do, uh, on a daily basis to, to prove to anybody, uh, that I am worthy and that I am capable. I know that I, I have worth, I know these things, but it's, difficult when the person that you're living with with your partner is constantly making you feel like everything that you're doing just isn't up to par you know? I don't want to make her mad I do appreciate her and I know she's very capable that's why I'm here in Texas and she's on the boat and I just need to make sure that she understands that and that she knows that because if she doesn't know it or she doesn't feel it then it doesn't matter what I think uh, you know it's it's not getting transmitted to her and therefore it's 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 worthless you know, Kurt does have a lot more experience on everything. Uh, on, on He's older than me uh, on the boat life. He's been on boats before. He's not a good teacher, so he has no patience. So things that I have had to learn, I've learned on my own. I'm not a good teacher. I've told you that. I've, you know, I just don't have the patience to teach. And so I've asked Linda to learn on her own or find other resources or find other people to teach her some of the basics that she's been needing to learn or wanting to learn. I'm like, okay, there's YouTube, there's Google, there's books, there's, there's sailing schools, whatever it is, you know, try to find somebody else to teach you so that you can learn these things because I'm just not the guy. Whatever uh, I, whenever I try to teach, my teaching methods make her upset. But it's been very, very difficult to get along with somebody who makes you feel like you are not 
smart enough or fast enough to pick up things that are not common sense. So, so then I get frustrated because there's something that I think that she should know or I think that she does know and I ask her to do something and she flat out doesn't do it and and it's because she doesn't know what she's doing or she doesn't know what I'm talking about and I make assumptions that she does and then of course that makes a big problem. So I'm hoping that through this time that while he is gone that I can hold my own, that I can take care of myself correctly here and here and that I can take care of Rigby and that this boat is still floating and the water is running and that everything is good so that when he gets back I can prove to him that I can do it and I want to I want to prove it to myself. I want to be able to do all of the list of the things that I know that I have to get done um, including my full-time job aside from this and and that I'm still standing at the end of it. I feel like I really need it for myself and I feel like I need to show show him um, that I can do it. Okie dokie, I'm done with my morning classes. Usually Tuesdays and Thursdays I take half days to get stuff done. So today is the day that I'm gonna get some stuff done. I've got some cleaning outside of the boat to get done, some cleaning inside of the boat to get done, and I've got to take Rigby to the bathroom before we do all of these things. So there is a wakeboarder going around on a ski boat causing a ridiculous amount of wake on my boat. In fact, our guitar fell. It felt like I was like in the ocean sailing um, and he has not stopped. I've been kind of waiting for him to stop. There he goes. And uh, he's not stopping, so I'm gonna have to just risk it. Um, and hopefully I don't get toppled over. So, you ready, Riggs? All right, second cup of coffee for the day down and I've got energy to keep going. Next thing on my list is to handle life with Rigby. I have got some serious cleaning to do, vacuuming and degrossing our couches because thanks to this wonderful, beautiful little thing here, my couches are covered in disgusting dog fur and because Kurt's been gone, she's been getting a little extra comfortable jumping on the couches and now they're covered in salt. Don't hide from this. Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed of what you've done? Don't worry, we'll fix it. You must be real proud of yourself there. You're about to watch me clean up all these cushions that you messed up. Rigby knows way too much for her own good. Anytime I'm doing any sort of cleaning that has been caused by her, she always does this. <laughs> She's like throwing herself a pity party like, Please don't give me away. Please, I can do better. I can be better. <laughs> I'm not gonna give you away. I'm not gonna give you away. I'm not. I'm tired.
I changed outfits to give me a second wind. I was covered in salty, sticky water and dried, crusty dog fur and just wasn't having it. But there is a lot of sun left and that's how we work here on the boat. When the sun comes up, we get up and work and when the sun goes down, we slow down and start winding things down too. So I'm gonna take advantage that I still got a couple of hours of sunlight left. And then we'll see if I still got enough energy to do uh, some cleaning inside. And then all I have left to do is just to tidy up a few things. Gotta get as much done today because then right after Kirk comes and I wanna make sure that uh, everything looks spotless. Four. And when I say the word spotless, I mean my definition of the word spotless, which is to do the best that I can uh, with the physical capabilities that I can do them in because boat life tours are very tough and very hard. And I know that the responsibilities need to be divided into both parties, but Kurt is too much of a neat freak uh, and a little bit of a control freak when it comes to cleaning that oftentimes I find myself letting him do most of the things just because like I don't want to deal with it or I don't want to be told that what I did was wrong or that he has to go back and do things all over again. And my list of responsibilities is very long. But then on top of that, Linda is very messy. She is, she is not a neat freak. I'm not messy and I'm not a disgusting slob. I'm just not as tidy as he is. You know, she'll clean. She'll certainly, she's not, she's not a slob. But, uh, you know, again, I have certain standards of cleaning. I have certain standards of doing things. And, you know, she doesn't clean the way I want it clean. So I end up doing it myself. And it just adds to the list of things that I have to do, which adds to the frustration. So. These chores are gonna get done the best that I can do them. He's gonna like it. Winner. I do need to let her have her own voice. I do need to back off and let her do things her way. And even though it's not my way, it still gets done and it, it, it needs to, uh, I need to be able to let her have her freedom to do that. And I know it's something I have to do. It's gonna to be tough for me to work on, but I, I've gotta do it, I've gotta do it. I love her very much and I wanna keep her happy. So it's something that I'm gonna to have to do and hopefully she's patient with me while I go through the process of relearning how to uh, communicate and how to, how to talk to her. You know, I've brought up a few points in the past in the catamaran versus monohull argument. And you know, of course we're catamaran people, so we, we uh, are a little biased to catamarans, but I'll give you one more point towards the catamaran side. And that is when you have your significant other with you and things aren't going so great, you're having a bad day and you've got a fiery Latina coming at you. It is nice to have a catamaran because it gives you the opportunity to, to get some space. They have a hole, you have a hole, you can get in your own hole, you don't have to see each other for a day. There's, there's a big benefit. That in itself should be enough reason to buy a catamaran. Okay guys, we've done our damage in Houston. We made it to Houston, I went to some stores and did my shopping and uh, tried to stay in some somewhat of a budget, but man, this is why I stay away from the first world because it does some damage to the pocketbook. I did get some marine parts. Uh, I got some lubrication, some dry lube for the, the mass tracks. Uh, I got some winch grease and some winch oil because I'm gonna uh, resurface the winches. So tomorrow morning, I'm heading back to Mexico to go check on the boat, to check on the wife and check on the dog. Hopefully everybody's okay. Well guys, I made it back to the boat and guess what? It was still floating. <laughs> Linda did a great job. Do you ever we got have our any doubts? Uh, Don't answer that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we got our visa runs done and it's been a little while since the, we recorded that video and things seem to be going pretty well. I'm I'm doing a lot better job of listening to her, I think, and I think we appreciate it, each other a little bit more these days. Yeah, we needed that time off. I feel a lot better uh, when we got some of that space and it took some time for me to have you off the boat to really, really acknowledge all the things that you do on the boat too. So don't think that you go unloved and unnoticed. Well, that's good. I think that the two of us together are a lot better than when we're apart yeah. because obviously in that video, somebody would have been there to pluck my eyebrows <laughs> and, and I would have been there to get her in focus. Yeah, yeah we're sorry I that was... video quality was not the best, yeah, but that's what rough. happens when we're, uh, when we're apart. Discombobulated. Yeah, yeah, the video was blurred because our hearts were blurred. All right, that's, that was terrible. I'm so the, um, the important question is, do you still love me?
Yes. Do you still uh, love me? I love you. <laughs> we are going to <laughs> we're going to keep up with this thing and get back to our fun loving adventure selves on these next videos so we hope you liked this video mm -hmm. give it a thumbs up subscribe, subscribe 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 we have been killing the subscribe game the last couple of weeks and that's thanks to you guys a lot of people have been telling us that they've been seeing us more uh, on their pages and their suggestions and stuff like that and none of that is possible without you guys showing that love and support so we really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much, and see you next week. See ya.